Yum, yum! Greg here from Pixel Fondue. There are a couple new displacement features in Octane 2019. The first one being vertex displacement, which allows you to use uh, any image-based texture, but also procedural textures, which you could not use before. And you could also use uh, vector displacement maps generated in Mudbox or ZBrush or Moto or a program like that. And there is a new displacement mixer node. So let's just take a quick uh, refresh course on displacement in Octane to see what it used to do. And so popping up, uh, we'll get the sphere on the left-hand side here. And here's our material. And for displacement, um, previously in Octane 2018, if you went over to new displacement, which uh, is somewhere here at the top now, um, you just had texture displacement. You didn't have vertex displacement and you didn't have this mixer. <clears throat> so texture displacement actually worked great as long as you had an image. So if I had an image like this image right here, I just plugged it into texture and I could go over here and define the uh, level of detail. This is a pretty uh, detailed map, so I can go 40, 96, and I could bump up the height to, you know, whatever, and uh, you could see this um, mega scans texture starting to come into play there, and it's nice, uh, really nice looking, let me just go in 100% here, um, you know, rock texture, and, and the displacement quality is fantastic. Uh, the problem is it wouldn't work with procedural. So if I have this, say, a noise procedural here, if you look at this texture, if I wanted to use that as a displacement map instead of just this uh, diffuse texture here, let me unplug my um, image and plug this in here, it, it wouldn't do anything. It actually lets you plug it in, but you could never get anything out of it. It just wouldn't work with uh, the texture displacement. It only worked with images. Um, so that has been rectified. So let me just uh, plug this back in so we can take a look at this side by side. Um, here's our image-based displacement over here and the octane texture displacement. And then if I go over to this sphere over here and uh, get its uh, nodes in the schematic, um, I can go to displacement and then I do uh, add displacement or new displacement and new vertex displacement. Very similar, a little bit, you know, a few, few more options on here. We have, um, you know, vector displacement, which I'll show in a second, and, uh, you know, the vector space, which is relevant depending on where you get your vector map from, but I'll get to that in a minute. First, let's just take a look at this noise texture. Again, you know, this noise texture wouldn't displace using the image-based displacement or the texture displacement that previously came with Octane, but now we can plug this into a vertex displacement map, and you'll see it explodes into an unusable mess. <laughs> but... That's okay. I did that on purpose because there's a couple things just to keep in mind. Um, selecting the sphere geometry here, you want to make sure that um, load cage is checked. And I also tend to have subdivide and octane checked here. And what that will do is subdivide this mesh um, in, on the GPU in octane rather than having Moto do it. You can do it either way. Uh, I tend to like to do it in octane. Um, so let's just put this height down to like around the same way. So you can see now it's, it's displaced. It's a little bumpy, so you can always bump up our subdivision level. So I bump that up to like four. I get more detail. You see there's more detail in there. If I go again, I'm getting more uh, polys in here to displace, more vertices, right? So it's vertex displacement, I have more vertices to displace. And so that looks pretty good. It also has an auto bump checkbox. If I click that, you'll see even more detail pop on. In fact, if I turn subdivision level back to one with auto bump checked, uh, it works somewhere like Moto's Auto Bump, but just, you know, displacement detail that's too fine for, um, or texture detail that's too fine for displacement will be applied as a bump map. So it, it's a really um, pretty nice feature, and it works with procedural textures, which is great. Let's take a look at the image we're using over here so we can sort of view these side to side. Um, we shuffle the noise over, and I believe this is the image right here. First, I'm going to knock the uh, Auto Bump off and turn this back down to zero, the subdivision level and uh, plug back in this texture. And so right off the bat, you see there's you know not a lot of detail there. Um, you know, it's the same image, so we're not getting a lot out of it. To really get nice, fine displacement like you do with the old style uh, texture displacement, you really need to uh, bump up your subdivision level a little bit here. So we'll just try a level of three. And you see that starting to come in. I also think I had 0.2 height over here, so let me make sure that's the same. So you can see it kind of resing in a little bit. You know, we bump this up to five. It's going to look even even better now. It's looking pretty comparable. Still a little chunky up top. And uh, I can turn on my auto displacement or auto bump map um, feature as well, which will uh, get those fine details from that um, big 4K map and apply those as bump maps. 
So with that on, we get a lot of our detail back. And, you know, at first glance, it's really good. It's just about as good as the image-based one. Although if you, you know, push in a little bit, you're not gonna see, um, you know, a little bit of a, some artifacts over here, like you see in here, that you're not really seeing over here in the old style um, image-based or texture-based displacement. So texture-based displacement, I think is a little nicer quality, a little finer detail, but it's not quite as flexible as the vertex displacement that you have uh, on the right hand side here. And of course you can mix these as well with the new vertex displacement uh, mixer nodes. So right here, um, we just unplug this, select displacement, then you go over to a new vertex displacement mixer and you get this, you know, essentially similar to a mix node if you're mixing um, textures or materials. And so we just plug in our uh, base on displacement one, like we had before. And then I have another texture I'll set up over here from Megascans for displacement number two. And uh, yeah, you just hover over that node there, it'll magnify, so there's displacement two. And right now the displacement two weight is 100%, so that's what you're seeing there. But um, I can adjust the weight over here. Let's say I want to do a 50-50 blend, I just put that down to 0.5 and it'll blend them 50-50, so you see this one starting to come through a little bit. Uh, and you can also, of course, do a uh, texture blend, so I can use that noise texture I was using earlier, uh, right here. This noise texture, I'm probably gonna bump up the um, contrast quite a bit, and uh, yeah, maybe make it just a little bit bigger, so it's a little more obvious when it's plugged in. And plug that into you don't want to plug it in to displacement one weight, you want to plug it into displacement two blend weight to blend that second weight in there. And there you'll see, well, let me get some textures on here, you'll see this a little more obvious. So I have got um, the albedo and roughness nodes set up over here as mixed materials. So I'm just gonna use the same noise texture as weight and bring these two mixed materials down here and plug one into uh, roughness and the other end to diffuse, and it should be a little more obvious how that's mixing. And voila, there we go. Let me just uh, go full screen here. So yeah, so you can see, you know, there, here's this texture, this sort of lava field mixing in here and here. Those are in the dark parts of the noise, and the light parts of the noise is where we have um, this sort of rocky texture over here. So. That's how it's working. Displacement, uh, mixed texture, and vertex displacement. And there's one other thing you can do, ve vector displacement as well. So if I hide uh, these two spheres and bring a plane uh, back into existence here, this plane, where is it? Oh, look at that. It has an ear growing out of it. So uh, this plane here is just, um, yeah, it's just a plane with a texture I downloaded from from a Mudbox uh, resources site. It looks like this. Boom, that is what a vertex uh, or a vector displacement map looks like. So it's displacing not in just uh, like a height map, just a black and white. It's actually displacing in X, Y, and Z. Um, the RGB channels correspond to those. And so you get this sort of funky looking abstract RGB image. But what it's doing is it's pushing this much, you know, this much out in Y, this much in X, this much in Z. And uh, it, you get an ear, which is, I mean, gotta say that's pretty cool. And it has some of the same, um, you know, it has, it has the same parameters over here. You know, I could subdivide it up higher or lower. So I put this back down to zero. We're gonna have a kind of a low resolution chunky ear, but I can, you know, res that back up with more subdivisions and get a nice looking ear and uh, adjust the height or the middle level. So like a uh, big ear, 1.5, there you go. So it's pushing it out more. Vector displacements are super cool. Um, you should be able to output them in Mudbox or ZBrush or Moto. Uh, I don't really see them used that much for as cool as they are. I'd like to see them used more. I'd like to see more vector displacement images from image scanning services like uh, like Mega Textures. I'd like to see some vector displacement images from them because obviously you can imagine like a lava field or a rock face or whatever that's, you know, as a vector displacement, it just gives so much more detail because it's not just pushing out, it's pushing in all three dimensions which is pretty awesome. But there it is. That's a uh, displacement in um, Octane 2019. Yum, yum.